Do you wonder about the little things that make Valorant the game it is? Well, today, we have some cool and interesting facts that have you covered. What is up, Pro Guides family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost, and today, we have 10 minutes of interesting and cool facts about Valorant for you guys to enjoy. Let's not waste any more time, and let's jump right into it. Before we jump in, we want to credit a few of our sources that found some of these specific facts and interactions that will be listed within this video. Shout out to VideoGameStats.com, Mr. Lowlander on YouTube, and Flex Ninja for finding some of these cool facts and interactions within Valorant as well. To start off this video, it would only be right if we talk about the crazy stats and metrics Valorant achieved in its historic beta last spring. Valorant was the king of Twitch during its early days in beta in April and May of 2020. Here are some of the mind-blowing stats it achieved during that period of time. Valorant held over 3 million daily active players during its tenure of beta in spring 2020. During the entire beta, over 470 million hours of gameplay were streamed in total. On the first day of beta, Valorant had record-breaking numbers for peak viewers in a single category on Twitch, with 1.7 million peak viewers on the first day of beta. The only other game to record numbers higher than this is none other than Riot Games' other IP, League of Legends. Over 34 million hours of watch time were consumed in the Valorant category on Twitch on the first day of beta, April 9th, 2020. And to top it off, over 334 million hours of watch time were consumed in April 2020 alone for the Valorant game category. The beta also caught a lot of cheaters over the course of its tenure. Over 8,870 cheaters were banned during beta. Can you imagine that? Riot has been working on several games within the League of Legends universe over the past decade, and originally Valorant, codenamed Project A at the time, was supposed to be within that universe as well. But in the early stages of development, director Joe Ziegler and his team discarded the idea of Project A being a part of the League of Legends universe. This decision was made because of complications with visuals and mechanics early on in its pre-development stages. And from that point on, Valorant was born as a brand new IP within the Riot Games arsenal. And since then, it has shaped into the game that we all know and love today. Valorant may still be a new game, but that doesn't mean you should be intimidated from trying to improve your game as well. Our website, ProGuides.com, is here to help you with all of your Valorant improvement needs. On our website, you can upload your gameplay bots quickly and get one of our veteran coaches to sit down and analyze your gameplay. You can book a session according to your schedule and get one of our many great high elo coaches to help you in one-on-one -on -one sessions with your gameplay and overall game sense. Head over to our website today to start your journey of creating the best version of yourself within Valorant. Here are a few fun facts about agents and their voice actors. Breach in-game is a Swedish character, but in real life he is voiced by a Norwegian voice actor David Menken. Because of this, many Swedish people on the internet noticed the Norwegian accent on Breach and complained that it didn't represent them well. Another cool fact about voice actors in Valorant is that Raze is voiced by Carolina Ravasa, who is a Colombian voice actor. Raze is a Brazilian agent and is supposed to have a Brazilian Portuguese accent, and Carolina has a Colombian Spanish accent, so if she sounds like she's more Spanish than Brazilian, now you know why. If Carolina Ravasa sounds familiar to you, that's because she's done other big projects within the video game industry. She also famously voiced Sombra from Overwatch if you've ever played her in that game. If you look into the sky on Ascent, you can see the practice range off in the distance. Ascent was the first map that the Valorant devs ever worked on and completed, and within the practice range you can see early concept areas for Ascent in the Spike Diffusal and Spike Plant training areas. Also, as you can tell, the same assets and color palettes for the map Ascent were also used in the practice range as well. The Stim Beacon and Brimstones kit gives you rapid fire by increasing your fire rate by 10%, but this effect does not work on pistols unless you have the full auto frenzy, then it will affect the fire rate. If you time yourself perfectly, you can use Omen's Shrouded Step over Breach's ultimate and you will not be hit by its effects and debuffs. On Ascent, if you are Omen and you have a Sage on your team, you can use her wall on the ultimate point box within B main to boost yourself up, and you can Shadow Step onto the green crates within B site. Credits to Flex Ninja for making this trick known. If you throw a Killjoy nade in this exact spot inside of Can on site, when you activate it, it will cover the entire front plant area that is the most common plant spot for B site on this map. A well-timed nade from here can ruin the attacker's hopes of planting in a good plant spot. Did you know that if Yoru uses his ult inside of Viper's ult cloud, she can see him while he remains inside of it? This can be a nice counter to Yoru's ultimate in a bomb down clutch situation. When playing Phoenix, if you get your timing right, you can ult at the exact second a raise ult will hit you and you will survive and come back with full HP. A nice noted omen trick is that you can use your shrouded step before you enter the teleporter. And when you phase into the TP, the sound will go off but you will TP back to where you last activated shrouded step. This is one of the most fun and easiest ways to trick the enemy team and land yourself some free kills. A Sova main trick that the Valor community at large might not know about is when Sova shoots his arrows into the sky on top of a spike plant, if you double bounce the second arrow it will for sure kill anyone who tries to stick through the damage of the first one and continue defusing. If you go up to the bench and ascent in the mid area of the map, there is a League of Legends easter egg on the railing of the bench. This hard to see figure is an easter egg for the League of Legends champion Tom Kench that was introduced into the game in Season 5. I guess you guys can start calling this the Tom Kench bench, <laughs> okay I'll stop now. 
If you are defending B-side on split with Killjoy, you can throw your Nano Swarm between this box and the wall. This makes it a lot easier to defend this less common plant spot that attackers will sometimes plant at. From this position, it is near impossible to destroy the Nano Swarm and it will cover both sides of the box. Before we move on, you guys know we couldn't go without our question of the day. Today's question is, do you think Riot should have included League of Legends champions in Valorant? Personally, I wouldn't have minded seeing Zed, Echo, or Yasuo in my ranked games. Who knows, maybe over time, Riot might soften their strict policy of no agent skins, or no League of Legends characters in Valorant. Only time will tell. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Now, let's get back to these facts. If you ever dreamed about making a square crosshair in Valorant, change your crosshair settings to 1, 3, 10, and 3 in the inner lines portion of the crosshair menu. Did you know that Phoenix and Yoru's flashes can break the glass on a Side Heaven on the map Ascent? Next time you're holding here, throw your flash through the glass first to catch players off guard. Most people will listen for the glass to break to know someone is near, but a well-timed flash will catch them off guard and land you a free kill. Many people don't know it, but the Marshall is a pretty underrated and underused gun. And because of that, many people don't know that the Marshall is near perfect accuracy while hip firing. When you're in a pinch, don't hesitate to line up a quick shot without ADSing and you'd be surprised what kind of kills you can get with this thing. In the practice range, there is a parkour course you can do by yourself that even continues to the top of the bell tower in the practice range. If you want to get better at Valorant movement and controlling your game, this is a fantastic place to start. Did you know that when an agent kills the exact same agent on the other team, they will have a special voice line they use to degrade them? For example, when one jet kills another jet, she will say, imposter down, after the kill. Did you know that there is a hole above the A-side door on the map ascent? When this door is closed, Raze and Killjoy can throw their nades through this hole if you line it up right and it will damage everyone on the other side. This is a pretty neat tip when you can get a good throw off in a pinch. Did you know Sky's Q ability isn't a dog or a wolf? It's actually a Tasmanian tiger. No, not the Tasmanian devil from Looney Tunes, a Tasmanian tiger. These animals were called thylacine and they were found on the continent of Australia before they went extinct. Despite being officially listed as extinct, many people and scientists believe that the species has survived through evolution in remote areas of Tasmania and on the mainland Australia. A cool fact to know for any competitive Valorant players out there, on Ascent, it takes 15 seconds to rotate from B through CT to A site while defending. And if you think that's deplorable, it takes 21 seconds to rotate from B site through CT to A site on Icebox. The next time you get yelled at by your teammates for not rotating fast enough on these maps, just tell them you practically ran an Olympics 100 meter dash just to get there. I know most people won't care, but it's a nice comeback for people who don't realize how big the wider maps on Valorant truly are. Every map on Valorant has a teddy bear hidden somewhere on the map. Have you found them all yet? If you look close enough, Race's Boombot has a digital smiley face on it. Even when it's chasing you down, it will still have that smiley face. Now, I don't care if I get blown up by the Boombot, I know I went out feeling loved. On Icebox, place your Killjoy Nano Swarms in this corner of the B-Site box to prevent attackers from planting in their usual pesky default spot. This should teach them a lesson the next time they try to quick plant against this box. Trust me, if you've played Attack Side on Icebox, you know you have thought it was a good idea to quick plant in this spot. As an avid Icebox defensive player, I know who you people are. In the mid area of Split by the Ramen Shop, there is a reference to the Scuttle Crab from League of Legends. And if you look below the Scuttle Crab on the left, the bins are filled with dead Scuttle Crabs who will probably be eaten soon. I know Riot has done a great job of cross promoting their games in the past year, but rip the little scuttles. Also, another callback to League of Legends lore, if you look very closely at Sage's clothes, she has the Shurima symbol on her chest. If you are unfamiliar with what Shurima is, just look up my favorite League of Legends champion Azir and you will get a nice history lesson in like 15 seconds on how great the nation of Shurima is. When playing on the map Haven as Jet, you can jump out of the window in Garage and if you time it correctly, you can use her float ability to land on the crate inside of Garage. This is nice to use in pre-rounds because you won't have to expend a charge of your updraft trying to get on top of this box. Use this angle to your advantage because not many attackers will think to look up as they start to walk into Garage. Did you know with Yoru that enemies can only see his flashbang after it hits something first? When playing as Yoru, try to angle your throws with your flash to land as close to your enemy as possible. This will give them the least amount of time to react and will make your flashes even more powerful, especially if you manage to pull this off in close quarters. And for our last cool fact of the day, Raze's satchel charge can stick onto Sova's owl drone and you can use the owl drone to deliver the payload and explode it to deal damage to enemies. You can also create the same interaction when you put her satchel charge on her boom bot as well. I guess Riot unintentionally made the RCXD killstreak from Call of Duty and put it in Valorant. Well guys, that's all we have for 10 minutes of facts about Valorant. If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing. Be sure to visit ProGuys.com to access some of the best Valorant coaching around. You can choose from any of our high elo coaches to help develop the skills you need to reach the rank that you deserve. All of our social media links are down in the description below. I'm your host, Sergeant Frost. Remember to stay safe out there, and I will see you all again very soon.